licensing authorization. Should we start a national uh, conversation? Okay. Yeah, I, I think that these are critical matters, and uh, some of us have in the past. I, I remember that I was part of a delegation that went to parliament to present a petition before the national communications law was passed. After the University of Ghana, the School of Communications Studies had organized a forum just on the threshold of us opening up the airwaves for private participation. And our, our argument at the time was that the National Media Commission was in a better position to look into the issues of dealing with frequency than the Frequency Registration and, and Regulation Board at the time. You know. But this was rejected by the government at the time. And that's why we have the National Communications Authority. You know. I mean, for some of us, we still think that the National Media Commission is, is better to deal with the issues of frequency than any other authority. Because the commission so far, for the period that we have sustained democracy, has not demonstrated any bias towards any particular government at any given time. It has demonstrated that it, it is there to serve the interest of the people of this country than any government at any time. I mean, the issue of national interests and the gov interest of government, is the problem is that we have not been able to define what is the national interest. We have always depended on the political party or the government in power at any time to tell us what is our interest. And we think that we need to define that. And that's where we need parliament as the bastion of democracy to begin to do that and shape I mean, discourse, national discourse. Because for as long as parliament continues to be partisan in everything that they discuss, it will be difficult to define the national interest, properly so called. And so we, we must do that. Then the other thing that, you know, particularization about public interest, national interest, and all that. I think that today there was some demonstration. That demonstration cannot be said to be national interest demonstration. It's a, it's a public interest demonstration. You know, those of us in the media, we deal with different publics at the same time. It's an aggregation of publics. The national interest is one. Public interest can be diverse. Because look at the question of, say, the national, the cathedral, for instance. Is that a matter of national interest, or is it a matter of some public interest? And you see the argument. Some people are arguing so lividly that it is something that is positive. And others are arguing against that. The media cannot decide that one argument should be dismissed as against another argument. The media must resonate both sides of those public arguments and leave the rest of, our, all of us to determine that. If we come to a national consensus on that matter and we resolve it, then that will be the national interest. Until then, there will be as many interests as there are divided public. And so sometimes it becomes necessary that you distinguish between the interest of a certain public as against the interest of the nation. And we will continue, I mean, I mean, to do that. Now, our friend, uh, he's, he's, he's gone. And he's talking about that. I mean, you invite me to your radio station. You don't lose control over me. If you lose control over me, it is your, li your liability. Because you are not under any obligation to invite me to your studio to come and do anything that I am doing. It is, it is, I mean, we are human and therefore it's, in some situations it may not be possible for you to intervene. But what you can do is as soon as I say that stupid thing, it is your obligation to intervene and say, sorry, this language is not the language that we use. I said that me listening to you, I'll be very much at peace. What annoys people in the travesty is this, that when somebody has said something that you know to be true, you say, oh, you have expressed your view. What kind of view is that? <laughs> I'm a very useless view. You know, so you, you, you make me worse off. Eh? That's what Bishop Desmond Tutu says, victimizing the victim twice. You know, and that's what our elders say. That the, the lizard says that it is not angered about the one that shoots at it and kill it, 
than the one who stands by and says, ah, you are a great Marx person. <laughs> and that is the problem. So when, when somebody comes to your studio and he's carrying the egg, first and foremost, ask what is the purpose of the egg at the studio? The egg has no business at the studio, so stop it. You know, and you have that obligation. If the person says that he will not leave the egg behind, don't let him enter your studio because you are not under any compulsion to allow that I mean, person to do that. Now, there was another issue also about ownership and what it represents. You know, yes, I mean, I mean, if the NDC sets up uh, a media house, you don't expect that it will propagate the virtues of the MPP. But what it should not do is to do propaganda about them people or to do propaganda about itself. I mean, at the heart of journalism is objectivity. For as long as you pursue NDC issues that are objective, that is within your purview. So the fact that it is an NDC station does not mean that every day it is going to churn out things that are untrue about them people as a way of prosecuting the agenda of the NDC. That one is not permissible. But for as long as it remains objective in the things that it is saying about the NDC, nobody can fault it. You can argue about it because, you see, at the end of the day, as Achebe has said, Achebe says that, you know, the cock that is in that community, you know, is a proper, is, it belongs to one household. Not even the household. It may, be, it may be owned by only somebody inside that house. But when it crows, the voice is the property of the neighborhood. And those of us who live in the village setting, and who knew what the cock did in those days, <laughs> the cock was a voice of awakening people that duty calls. And if you have a cock that crowed at times that were so that when people woke up, they encountered the spirits of the underworld. I said that the next morning, there will be a demand that that cock should be slaughtered. <laughs> you know, so the interest of the people in as objective ways as is possible. Okay, let's <laughs> Right. So uh, I think I think that these are some of the issues that we need to deal with. And we as journalists, as, as media people, must be sincere with ourselves. So when we speak of freedom that we have freedom, it is like speaking about Paul. Either when he was Saul or either when he was Paul. If you don't bring that person that is Paul who was Saul, and it is Saul who is Paul, then you create a problem. And this is, this is the problem. If you came to me to convert me into Christianity, and you presented Paul only as Paul, I will tell you I cannot be like that. And if you presented Paul to me only as Saul, that would be dangerous also. And so if you wanted to convert me, then you have an obligation to let me understand that it is this same person who was Saul who committed these atrocities against Christendom, who, when he became converted, became Paul and started preaching. Then I realized that I am capable of changing because I can be evil and I can be good. But if you only tell me one side of him, you will lose me. And that is the responsibility that we must bear as media people. And so even when we work for an NDC radio station, even when we work for an NPP radio station, we must understand that beyond NDC, there are human beings. And not every one of them may believe in the ideals that we stand for. And the fact that they do not believe in our deeds does not mean that they are stupid or they are ignorant. Because democracy is more about choices than about who is superior and who is inferior. That is the way that we must look at it as alternatives and not that somebody's viewpoint is a superior viewpoint and somebody's viewpoint is an inferior viewpoint. Thank you. Thank you.